All right, today I'm looking at the TRX 766. It's a tract mower. It's the first one I've used. Normally I'm used to using the Skag. So it's got a Kawasaki FX 1000V engine on it, which I think is the equivalent to about 35 horsepower. We just got done cutting this field. And overall it did pretty good. It bogged down a little bit on me. You can kind of see where the grass builds up. But it's got a lot of cool features. It's got kind of like a spring system on these front wheels that absorb some of the impact. Semi-solid tires. So you won't get a flat up front. The spindles are uh, sealed spindles underneath here. No grease points. The front yokes, they're sealed. Looks like it does have a spot that you can pull out maybe grease once a year. You got a suspension seat on the unit up to 280 pounds. It's got like an electronic type start system where you type in a little password and hit start. This is a carbureted model, so it has the choke on it. Two fuel tanks. Not sure on the capacity, but I'd be willing to bet it's at least 10 or 11 gallons. For all you smokers out here, you got a 12 volt, so you can put your cigarette lighter right in there. Let's see, here's your fuel. Little fuel valve switch between tanks, kind of like an X mark. It's got ROPS, roll cage. Overall, pretty decent machine. What's cool about this one, it's got a push button keypad like a dozer. Yeah. One, got it in, and she's got juice. This is the final review for the Altos TRX 766 Zero Turn Bush Hog. To start out, the things I really like about this mower is the amount of horsepower that you get. Be it the 35 or 38 horsepower version of this machine, it's pretty much got enough horsepower to cut anything that you put in front of it. The next thing is the ride. The quality of this ride with that suspension seat is just phenomenal. Compared to my Skag Turf Tiger, I would get beat up on this same terrain versus this Altos, which is pretty much like you're just coasting on cloud nine. 
The third thing is I like the ease of use of not having a key. To have that little combination pad to where you can just type in the combination and start the mower is very nice. Now, on that subject, I'm going to go ahead and go into the dislikes and maybe some improvements that I think that you could put on that mower. And the key switch is one of those. So, on normal zero turns, a key switch will fail. Normally, five or six years, depending on whether the mower's in weather or not. So, my question is, on the digital keypad, if the mower's parked outside, what's the longevity of that keypad? And when it fails, how would you start the mower? Is there a way to bypass it if the mower were to fail on that keypad? The next thing that uh, caught my attention fairly quickly when I was mowing is the amount of rattle that's coming from the roll cage. So it's basically the pin that holds the roll cage together just rattles constantly. And it's kind of like a high pitch kind of rattle. You might be able to hear it on this video. But if there is a way to maybe make a spring-loaded retractable pin or a pin that has a tighter fit in the hole, that might be nice just to cut down on that rattle because when you're mowing for two hours or more, it kind of gets on your nerves. So the next thing is the visibility over the fuel tanks. When you're using this mower and going down the field or if you're close to something and want to see where you're at in regards to where your tracks are on the side, you really have to lean over the mower to see where those tracks are located. So if they could maybe make the fuel tanks a little lower profile, that might be nice just so you could see where your tracks are so you don't hit things with them. So the next thing, um, I noticed that the mower, even with this 35 or 38 horsepower engine, that it was still slowing down even in the high grass. So maybe one of my recommendations would be to go with the fuel injected model. Because I think with the fuel injected model, the machine's not going to slow down and uh, it'll pretty much be unstoppable. Just got done cutting a field with it. You can see where the buildup is. Got a little bit of buildup in the tracks. The only thing I noticed was we lost a bolt. So the bolt that holds this little arm that holds the deck so it won't rock back and forth, it just backed out on us when we were mowing. Other than that, everything uh, made it through okay. Just as a side note, these are just my opinions and my observations from using this mower for a very short time period. If your opinions or experiences differ from mine, I encourage you to write those down on the comment section right below this video. And I want to thank you for watching this video to the end.